Hi, I'm Kate Livy, the Director of Education and the Associate Curator here at the Chesapeake Bay Maritime Museum, and I welcome you back to another feature of Chesapeake Treasure, an installment here on Facebook where we explore one of the 68,000 objects in our collection. So hopefully this particular Chesapeake Treasure gives you a terrible thirst. Um, if you're a native Marylander like me, then you know that besides Old Bay, nothing is quite as Maryland as National Bohemian Beer. Natty Bo has accompanied crab feast, uh, sailing trips, regattas, you name it. Natty Bo is a part of the culture of the Chesapeake. And so I thought it would be really fun for a lot of people who are fans of the beer to find out about some of the cool things we have in our collections. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about Baltimore beer. Um, in the 19th century, Baltimore was a hub for immigration, specifically Irish and German immigrants. Now, as you might have known if you've ever visited Germany, Germans have a high expectation for excellent beer. And when these German immigrants arrived in Baltimore, they decided the best way to make sure that excellent beer continued was to brew their own. So there's this huge proliferation of breweries in Baltimore in the 19th century. By the 19 teens, they really start to consolidate and you see a lot of them concentrated around O'Donnell Street in Baltimore. And National Bohemian was one of those brews um, that was concentrated around O'Donnell Street. Now, as you can guess from the name, Bohemian really refers not to like a, you know, a relaxed kind of, you know, morally, you know, questionable person, you know, who likes some um, fancy paintings and fun food, but we're talking about someone who comes from the Bohemia region of of Germany. So it's again, it's this reminder that it's originally this German beer. So in the 19 teens, a lot of these breweries consolidate and um, National Premium, which was another brand and National Bohemian consolidate to become the national beer company. Now things are going great until Prohibition. So Prohibition ends in 1933 to the great relief of uh, famous Baltimorean H.L. Mencken who once commented at the end of Prohibition that Baltimore was knee deep in beer and made him believe in the power of prayer. Um, and National Bohemian at that point decided that they really needed to brand their beer. Um, and so that's when they came up with the mascot of, of Mr. Bo, the famous uh, one-eyed, mustachioed bartender who became, has sold their beer ever since and is really synonymous with the brand. Um, now, looking through the 1940s, um, that's when canning is invented for beer. Um, those pop tops become really popular. And in the 1950s, another big shift starts to happen, which is the interstate highway system. So that allowed beer to be uh, transported across the, com the country and national companies could now sort of dominate beer brands. Um, and it put a lot of pressure on smaller brands like National Bohemian to really up their game. So National Bohemian in response decided that they were gonna hire a really famous um, marketing company to come down and do a campaign for them. And that is where the Land of Pleasant Living, um, the really famous um, marketing campaign came from. Of course, with the jingle that so many of you may know, which I would sing if I was allowed to by copyright law, but because of infringement, I will just hum a little bit of it. <laughs> So I also love Natty Bo. I think that's probably coming across. Um, but one of the things that I learned when I came here beyond Mr. Bo and um, a lot of the cool parts of the history that I knew about already was as part of this marketing campaign, the Land of Pleasant Living, they, um, the, the marketers put together these um, animated uh, commercials that had different characters. I mean, many of you might remember them. The Troubadour, they had like a clan that sang, they for featured, you know, Lord Calvert, um, and of course they had a pelican, and the pelican they named Chester Peak. Well, as part of this marketing campaign, this is a brilliant stroke, they actually bought a 1915 Chesapeake Skipjack, they renamed it the Chester Peak, and it sailed around the bay in the summertime with a spokesman, Frank Hennessy, on board, who was sort of, he, he became like essentially the ambassador for National Bohemian. He'd go to regattas in this boat, um, he'd go to all sorts of events, he'd give out free beer. Um, so what I have today is a burgee. Um, this is a signal flag that would have flown on the skipjack Chester Peak um, with the character Chester Peak on it. And on the back, of course, you've got that famous tagline. It says, 
Chesapeake Bay, the land of pleasant living. Now, um, they gave out all kinds of free stuff. I think we refer to it today as swag to lots of people who would come out and, and get some of this beer at these different events. And so, again, hello, we have a, um, you know, uh, a little, um, what do we call these things? Um, I forget what the name, oh, I'm having, this is, this is the danger of going live, isn't it? Um, anyway, so that you could, you know, they, they pass out stuff like this. It again had Chester Peak on it. It even says compliments of Skipjack Chester Peak. Um, someone will correct me in the comments. I have no doubt. So thank you. I'm sorry. I'm having a senior moment here. And then finally, one of the things that, oh, it's a megaphone. Thank you. Peanut gallery help is always appreciated. So thank you so much. Um, uh, so we have a little megaphone here that, again, you could use to say, I love beer. Um, to my left, so here's another one of the famous parts of this marketing campaign. Um, the famous photographer, the Maryland photographer, Aubrey Bodine, was hired to help pr uh, take promotional images for this campaign. And so you can see here again, it says from Chesapeake Bay, the land of pleasant living. And it's a really iconic image of a very famous Chesapeake summertime um, uh, leisure activity, which is of course log canoe racing. Um, and log canoe racing is always accompanied by, you guessed it, lots of beer. So um, these are just a few of the objects that in our collection that talk about, uh, you know, brewing and uh, brewing collectible ephemera. Um, but it's a reminder too that, you know, this, there's a reason that this whole marketing scheme, um, the land of pleasant living is still known about today. It's because it resonates. I mean, if you live here, you know that it truly is. So, and I will say a cold natty bow helps make it just a little bit more pleasant. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed this very thirsty edition of Chesapeake Treasure. Um, and you let us know in the comments what you thought. Um, Join us next week for another cool feature and have a great afternoon.